big day today. Depends how you define big, but it's definitely only a day. And in an unusual move, heading out with a group again. So more on that soon. <laughs> yeah, Alexandra Hattrick that set up the riverboat service did ask that a lot of the bush was left alongside the river so that his clients could see beautiful pristine native bush as um, they were going up the river in the river steamers. Here, folks, you can see all these oyster shells, and um, you sort of see the shells that are in the bluff here. This is called the Oyster Cliff area of the river. This is the place the Wongani River gets to the road. Now, just past here, and there's quite a few places you're going to see a lot of rock walls that have been diverted. They're called river groins or diversions for the river steamers to give them a bit of, bit of height to get through. Is called Puki Atapu. It's um, or known as the Atani Mountain. So what happened was um, about two and a half thousand years ago, when they say Lake Taupo erupted, there was a big laha that came down as a result, and the corner here was really quite tight. So what happened was, when the big wave of water came down, it jammed up, and it became a big dam. And what happened was, it then it just all of a sudden broke up. It's way through this very narrow peninsula. So this big ridge was joined out to this um, the big hill here. It knocked off three and a half kilometres of the Wongani River. Oh, jeez. Wow. Now, they were going to build one of the biggest hydroelectric dams here in about the 1960s. It was going to dam 150 kilometres of the river, so they reckon it was going to be um, twice the size of the Wellington Harbour. Okay. It never went ahead because of the, a lot of the Mary burial grounds. And also the expense of doing it, the amount of concrete, and the biggest problem is the Wanganui River doesn't have a, enough water coming down it to keep a power stand going. Because it's a very stagnant river, and a lot of our flow of the river actually comes from underground springs, as well as the tributaries, but it's a lot of underground springs. <laughs>
the night in Rana, and the Hauha spent the night around the corner on a place called Tapananui, and then in the morning the battle happened. It went for about an hour or so, it was quite a short battle. Sister of Bea's beard, so the actual beard of the founder of the Jerusalem convent. Amazing, amazing place and now operates as accommodation. Still run by the Sisters of Compassion. In Papariki, where we're getting back on the bikes now. So this is Wanganui River Adventures in the former Papariki School. Okay, so this is where the Wanganui River Road starts. So today I'm actually taking part in, in an inaugural run of a new package the collaboration between the Mail Run and Wanganui Scenic Jet. Absolute pleasure to be able to join all these people on such a trip that there will be an article coming out shortly and that will also have all the details. Beautiful way to see some long news, stunning scenery. Perfect reason to stop just after climbing out of Papariki. Just a gentle climb out of Papariki for about 10 kilometers, but perfect spot to collect your thoughts, catch your breath. Yes, big pigs. 
There's why the gate's shut, they keep coming in. Oh. Many of the settlements along the Wanganui River Road have Māori and English names because when the European settlers came to the area they struggled to pronounce the Māori place names and subsequently gave them European names that they could. So in 1990 the river level halfway up the door on the wool shed 